And the word he asked me to ask you is, where are you? Can you ask your neighbor, neighbor, where are you? Are you? Because a man that knows not where he is, does not know where he is going. Let her fulfill a destiny. Oh, Jesus. It's just a combination of numbers. 2018, 2019 is the same numbers. What will make it different from this year is what will make happen to your life. We respond to the voice of enemies than we respond to the voice of the truth. Without his presence, there is no presence. If you engage his presence, then you access your presence. to where you are now. There is no destination for a man who wants to live a life of destiny when he has no, no idea of where he is. Because your destiny is your destination. Everybody lift up your two hands. I pray for you. Go in peace. Yeah. Necessary news is not dealing with human relationship. Some of us we have multiple relationship. It's not sexual relationship, but it's a drunk association. He said that man must be a man of one wife. You know why? When you have two women in your life, you'll be confused. One is enough. Confusion of one woman is enough. Women don't like this one when I talk now. May I remove my suit so that I can repeat? Because as I mentioned, some beats just enter me. This look of women just make me sweat. Because there are more women in the house, I began to tell myself, Israel, take it easy now. Because if the head of that man must be sound, he doesn't need confusion. When the woman talks into your head, one, the tendency that you will do what they say. Women may not like to hear that, but as men, we know women have strong voice on men. Men actually are the weak of this Women are emotional beings. God was saying, if this man would desire the office of a bishop now, don't get it twisted when you hear the word bishop. Bishop means a leader, a leader of leader. He's not the captain. You see, when we wear that cap, we say, oh, that's a bishop. No, a bishop is talking about who is a leader, who is leading other leader. And everybody as a child of God is a potential leader. Someone say, I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'd like you to constantly remember that. In any sphere of life you find yourself, you are a leader and you are leading someone. If you are being led, you also are doing what? Leading someone. In our leadership capacity differs. Say, so that man must be a man that is well behaved and don't also get confused when he's using the word man he's talking about both sex the 
the reason why oftentimes scripture emphasizes man man is that in the original context of the scripture written from the you know from the Greek the Jew you know emphasis is laid on man than women also so we are we have also that challenge in interpretation so he said verse 3 said not given to wine no striker not greedy of filthy lucre but patience not a prowler not covetous one that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity verse 5 for if a man know not how to rule his own house how shall he take care of the church of God. He also emphasized something very unique here. As I was studying this scripture, he talked about not being able to rule his own house. Now, you, are, as an individual, you must have a power, a rule over your own house. You are a house. He says, For ye are the temple of the living God. You must, it's not just a family house right now which is also what it is but as an individual you must have a rule over yourself when you don't have a rule over yourself over your own immediate territory immediate responsibility immediate family you cannot lead others right because it's it's leadership is a is a character influence it's a behavioral influence have a talkative as a mother the tendency that all the children in that house will be talkative when you have a man who is extremely too quiet to a fault the tendency that if he's not careful his son will be too quiet to a fault almost look like a moron because the, the tendency that the child wants to not just the dean of the father now influence him but also what he sees the father does But where I want to take us to the short note, as we look into the subject of dominion in a different concept, is what I want to show you. Number six, verse six. Not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now, that verse six is what I want us to do. Together now. Let's go now. Let's go together. Can we read it? Not a novice. Uh -huh. But being let's read the line now. Let's read the line. Now come on, let's go again. Not a novice. Mm -hmm. Let's up with pride. Mm -hmm. Fall into the condemnation of the devil. Amen. Amen. What's the word other word for novice? A novice. Ignorant. Unlearned. For you to have dominion and, and being able to do so well in your leadership capacity, you must not be a novice. Paul said, to all men I became all things. So you must know virtually what? Everything. Is that possible? You must be knowledgeable in everything as touching your leadership. Everything. Nobody is a monopoly of knowledge. Right? Sure. So, but you must know everything around it for you to be a great leader. And when I talk about leadership, I narrow it down to church leadership as a believer. Because when we say dominion and it, and it gave them dominion, it is giving them a responsibility to lead. And dominion in itself is not ownership or stewardship. Dominion what? It's not ownership, it's what? Stewardship. 
You have been given an assignment as a child of God, as a leader at work at the church. You do something, you have authority to do it, but it's not ownership. You must do it as a steward. With understanding that you you have you have a responsibility to report back. Someone sent you. I don't know if I may be somebody now. Yes, he gave them the this is my line of authority. I know what I'm doing. Nobody should question me. No. You make a mistake. You are not there by yourself. You are there for someone. A manager of Wells Fargo Bank of a particular branch is a powerful man. He's not the owner of that bank, but he's powerful in that branch. His dominion does not extend to another branch. It does not extend. His dominion ends at that space given to him. But if he's found to be a novice at that job, what would they do to him? To fire him. He's given dominion, but if he does not know how to exercise it, he removed. I will say this in conclusion too. It's a food for thought for someone this morning. You, as an individual, as a child of God, how are you exercising your dominion? Are you knowledgeable enough to undo what God has committed to your hand? Our dominion right is not to oppress, is not to control, to assign authority on people. Our dominion right is to direct, it's for guidance. So Paul was writing to Timothy. You must appoint a leader and give him dominion, authority to do something. In this house, say, make sure that it's not a novice. Let me ask somebody graciously beside you Are you a novice? Or are you not a Jew? It is a big question. Do you think you have known well enough what God expects of you? Your dominion right is not proven until you have been able to extend it to others. I will explain that. When you have been given authority or dominion to do something in the church, let me break it down for us. Your ability to delegate that authority expresses the, the your your dominion capacity or your, expresses your ability to actually raise godliness. Yeah. So it's not sitting on people, oppressing people, but raising people. Dominion is is not ownership. It's stewardship. It's a power of delegation. It's only given to you. That right is passed on to you. It's not your own, but it's borrowed to you to use. And so you also extend it. So if you keep it at your level, you are not growing. My dominion right as a shepherd is not to constantly speak over you, but to raise other speakers. To raise men, making disciples of all men. As I do you know that. You becoming, you may come in as a novice, but you must not sit here as a novice. You must get better. I 
our dominion rights is a lifestyle and it's not it's a lifestyle and not um, not a lifestyle of oppression but a lifestyle of guidance helping others to discover others and to help them fulfill their own line of assignment in destiny so, so that leader in you that leadership in you that ability in you must be carried out with all sense of wisdom see that man must not be a novice least being lifted up with pride what leadership does what power does what dominion does that the tendency is that when you when you carry it you, you tend to feel like i have arrived this is me without me nobody else that's the wrong understanding it's not ownership it is still what you and as you do it do it with discretion you are not carrying out anything without instruction <coughs> I want some of us carry out some instruction, just carry it as, as a final tone. Like, boom, it ends at your table. You have been giving this is my jurisdiction, nobody question it. You are delegated on behalf of the church. So you are going to visit somebody who is hurting or somebody who is sick or somebody who needs encouragement. You're not going as an individual in your mindset. You are going as a church on behalf of the church, on behalf of leadership that positioned you to seek and to watch over others. It's not ownership. It is what? Stewardship. And this will grow the church. What I'm showing you is to open up your mind for readiness that... We are not talking about dominion series only on the on the, on the subject of oppressing our oppressors or dealing with demons and devils, but even helping us to understand that we have a mandate to extend our dominion right to harvest more souls, to cause enlargement in this house. Someone say good amen dear now. Amen. So your dominion right is to reach out with the mindset that have been delegated to seek after others. They may not even have legitimate reasons for misbehaving, but you at your own level, you see beyond them. Leadership, as a man who has been given authority, does not seek for fault of others. You are not leading to fault others, you are leading to raise others, to perfect others sir you won't hear that now did you hear that now yeah. so if you want to be a great leader all you are saying is wrong 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 you will soon wrong yourself you do soon do what you will wrong you will ask yourself your leadership seat will just be you have nobody to seek over, to look over anything. So, build your leadership understanding capacity to understand that you are delegated to carry out an assignment under supervision without, without a mindset to intimidate or oppress or to fault people. You are not a fault finder. You are a seeker of men. And the people you have been asked to see, God knows that they are not perfect. He didn't ask you to lead perfect people. Sure. Lord, ooh, I got so many drama people. He said, Yes, I sent you to help them. It's not. An error. It's not a chance. Of, it's a, a mistake. I sent you a purpose. Makes me a a a, a rebranded set of people, believers, from a community of confused people. Let me just say that. 
Now we see young folks everywhere. People are confused. Even in the church. Bunch of confused folks. But we are sent to them. And we cannot be sick of them. Did you hear that now? We are sent to them. We cannot be sick of them. The day you get sick of men, then your assignment, your dominion right. He gave you to need to rule over crippling things and living things. Those living things are those human beings that you are struggling to direct that are not directing you. Wandering sheep. Is enough. Can't say it the way I should say it. Receive wisdom. Jesus will speak in the public parable. But when he brings in his own to the inner carcass, then he can break it down. He can go. <laughs> it's just the law and levels of leadership. Even God has the holy of holy. The outer court, the holy of holy, and the, the holiest, the most holiest place, where himself is just in him. You have the outer court. In the church of God, in the Old Testament, the, the worshiper will sit outside. They don't come into the temple. Then the priest and the Levite comes inside the temple. And then the high priest goes into the holy of holy, and that high priest alone in that holy, they will put a chain on his waist. Only him gets to this point where I'm standing. The other priest will be here. The church congregation will be outside. They cannot enter the sanctuary. You go to some Catholic church, you see that happen, right? Sure. Crowd outside. Another section of the church. Few elites. Elders are pointed. They have, they have another altar that is accommodating people. Then there's another altar where only the Pope. Now, in the Old Testament, so they put a chain on the waist of the high priest. While his ministry should they stop hearing his voice? Or the chain gets weakened. Then they know that he has fallen. Then they will pull him because nobody can go in to carry him out. So they only pull the chain until they pull his body out. Now, we just come because the veil had been broken. We just come yakatatiously <laughs> and just misbehave anyhow. In the tabernacle of God. Yes, sir. No reference. You must not be a novice if you must serve God. Those are the things that I want to teach some of us in clear rudiment, clear language. I see that many of us are in trouble, but we don't understand the ethics of me. In the holy of holy, only the high priest is allowed. And even as it were today, it's the same thing. Only Christ took the blood when he rose to the throne of the Father. He told me, I said, do not touch me, because I have not seen the Father yet. Until he appeared to the Father, then he came back and reappeared to them on earth. Then, then they could touch him. When he died, no one was allowed to touch him. Until he took, he first presented himself to the Father. Then he came back. Then he went to the house of his disciples, knocked at their door. When he came, he said, Is Jesus not just said, you touch me now? Mm. Feel the hole. Then they could touch him. Why wouldn't let me touch him when they met him on his way to the grave? No. Until he had presented his because it's about holiness. The sanctity in this service. I'd like us to sing one song, Love the Devil, Sanctuary.
never see that way back because you are just singing. Just, just, just speak to the Lord. And as we set our hearts to walk in power this morning, something is about to happen in this service. An amazing move of God. Just look at God seated on the throne on the seat of mercy. And the word he asked me to ask you is where are you? Can you ask your neighbor, neighbor, where are you? Where are you? Because a man that knows not where he is does not know where he is going. Destiny. Jesus. Year is just a combination of numbers. 2018, 2019 is the same numbers. What will make it different from this year is what will make happen to your life. We respond to the voice of enemies. Now we respond to the voice of the truth. Without his presence, there is no presence. If you engage his presence, then you access your presence. Your greatness answers to where you are now. There is no destination for a man who wants to live a life of destiny when he has no, no idea of where he is. Because your destiny is in your destination. Everybody lift up your two hands. I pray for you. Go in peace. Yeah. Yeah.